So it is currently Wednesday morning, and as you can probably tell behind me and a little bit over here, there's just so much stuff everywhere in our warehouse. Some of this stuff needs to be sold, some needs to be redonated, some needs to be thrown away. The pile over there is just literal <laughs> garbage, uh, and we just have to get all this stuff processed today. So we're gonna do a quick whatnot auction over there. It should be about an hour and a half or so. I think we've got 25 items and six giveaways. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and knock that out, get all that shipped, and then kind of tackle the warehouse today. Just take you guys along for the ride and show you a fairly normal day in the life of us as full-time resellers and YouTubers. Stick around. Just to give you guys an idea of some of the stuff we sell on whatnot, we've got some Nike ACG boots, this little South Carolina hat, a bunch of hats, a bunch of plush. Pokemon plush usually do pretty well for us. Uh, we've got some new in the box SpongeBob vans. Uh, those are super cool. We got a little marble belt buckle. A lot of people in whatnot do shows in specific categories, uh, which is probably recommended for most people. But since we have, you know, our social media following, we just kind of go on and almost treat it like a virtual flea market booth and just try to sell a little bit of everything. I mean, we have a military ammo can. Uh, so just a lot of good stuff. We're doing some giveaways. Uh, should be a really fun time. So we just finished our whatnot auction. It took just under an hour and we sold a total of 28 things. We did end up giving away like four or five different bonus items. So let's say we got 34 items total going out from an hour long auction. That is by far our favorite part about whatnot, having the ability to move things super quickly. It probably goes without saying, but obviously having a large social media following helps with whatnot auctions. I think we have like 250 people watching at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday. And that's certainly not typical for someone that doesn't have a social media following. And when you have that many people in a show, it's pretty easy for you to get close to market value, if not even more for a couple items. Uh, there, was, there was a pair of vans we sold, uh, the SpongeBob vans new in the box. Those, we spent $49 on those and those sold for like $29 or 30, they, they sold for less than we paid. But we also sold a Nightmare Before Christmas hat that we got at the bins for like 25 cents and that sold for $51. So it all balances out, whatnot is, awesome. We love it. You know, obviously it's really fun to, to do the live auctions and connect with our audience like that, uh, and hang out with you guys. And then it's really fun to sell stuff and, and move out 34, 35 things in an hour. So we have a lot of stuff in our quote death pile or money pile or whatever you want to call it that just was bad buys or stuff that would be good, but then we found out it has a little stain or an imperfection. So the easiest way to just clear out some space uh, other than whatnot is just to flat out redonate this stuff back to another thrift store. We don't personally donate to Goodwill. Uh, I feel like everybody and their mom donates stuff to Goodwill and they have so much stuff that they have outlets where they just sell the stuff for super cheap. Uh, so we try to donate to smaller locally owned thrift stores that are maybe backed by a local charity or something like that just to um, I don't know. I don't know. We just like doing that. You can donate to Goodwill if you want. I'm just telling you what we do. So we just dropped off all of our thrift store donations at this thrift store and we're going to go inside and see if we can buy anything. We got to replace all the stuff we just donated. <laughs> You guys already saw the shoes and the Stussy beanie, and I just found a couple little shirts here. We got a nice Ohio State sweater. It's just on the Coliseum tag, size medium. Clothes here are really, really cheap. It's like two bucks a piece or something like that. So we'll grab that. Got this little Star Wars like baseball style Henley shirt. I don't know if that's the right word for it. It says size medium. I don't know if that's a kid's medium or a women's medium, but I imagine it could probably fit both. That'll probably be a dollar. Uh, and then I got this really cool Alaska. Uh, crew neck sweater as well. Gildan, made in Honduras, so not vintage, but it's just got a cool look to it. Getting into fall, this should sell 
pretty good. So like five bucks and all three of those things. The shoes are three bucks and this hat's probably like 50 cents or something. Haley found a couple things too. I'm gonna go see what she's got. I have, this is a brand that maybe look out for. I have never sold it pre-owned, but it's called Tail. Yeah. I found it two or three other times, new with tags, and they sell like almost immediately. It's yeah. like a outdoorsy, like golf type brand. Yeah. And I probably wouldn't pick Feels it up nice. except for the pattern. The pattern. Yeah, it's really a cool, cool pattern. This like just, it's an MMA uh, elite yeah, shirt. The tag. Oh, yeah, MMA elite tag. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Made in Vietnam. This is just, it's a Neiman Marcus sweater, but it's 100% cashmere. And okay. it's, oh, that is it's soft. a small, but you can tell that it hasn't been shrunk or anything. Yeah. Always be on the lookout. Like if you get cashmere, make sure that like, if, th if this was a large, I wouldn't get it because yeah. it's not a large. Make They've, sure it hasn't shrunk and make sure there's no moth holes. Yes. And then the last thing, th it's just on a Coliseum tag, oh, but it's a too. Chicago Blackhawks sweatshirt. Nice. Like I, love, I love the Blackhawks like the whole design, the whole vibe yes. of that team is really cool. Yeah. It's awesome. So all the clothes we got today is probably a total of like 15 bucks or yeah. something. That's crazy. $19. Right. I appreciate uh -huh. it. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Mystery flavor here. Last time we were here, my mystery flavor lollipop was like, oh, it's Stevo. Everybody look at Stevo resells. Sorry, we beat you. There's nothing left. Oh, you good, man. Take it all. I'm just kidding. I didn't, we didn't search that hard. Uh, but last time I went here, I got the mystery lollipop and it was like cinnamon flavor and it was the worst <laughs> possible outcome. So hopefully today is better. Hey, Steve-O, everybody hey. go check out his channel, Steve-O hey. Resells. Thank you, guys. I'll link it right here in the sky. I have just removed the mystery wrapper. Here's the color. It doesn't look it too appetizing. Like cinnamon one. <laughs> it looks just like this. I, if this is cinnamon, I'm, I'm going to lose it. The suspense is building. Hmm. Is it like pina colada? Or I like... think it's like butterscotch. Ew. Tastes like butterscotch. Not bad. Pull it into the old handy dandy Goodwill. Look at all those donations out there. Just sitting there. Oh my goodness. Collecting dust. I'm telling you folks, that's why we don't donate to Goodwill. They got too much to handle as it is. I know. They're just loaded. Loaded with stuff. Kind of excited seeing the LeBron logo back here. <laughs> Look at these. These things are beat, bro. Sometimes it's okay to throw things away. You know, you don't have to donate everything to a thrift store. Sometimes shoes just get past their useful life and they just need to be thrown away. Got pretty excited, just found this pair of, or the single North Face shoe. Looks to be in good shape. However, the match is over here and it looks like a dog or something got to it. And yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Pretty torn up. I'm gonna have to pass on those. It's got this pair of uh, Adidas shoes right here. I don't know what these are. They don't look like anything. What are these? Marathon TR10. Be in good shape. Six dollars and fifty cents. We'll grab those. It's got this little Nike size medium hoodie here. Patriots. Nike check on the sleeve. This will be I think four or five dollars and seventy-five cents. Don't see any holes or stains or anything. I'll grab that. Got a couple cool pairs over here, but the condition's just a little bad. We got some Brooks. Um, Adrenaline 12s, but they've got a big chunk missing out of here. They've got a little bald spot there. They've got some heel wear on the inside right there. Um, and they got weird, like, third party laces. So I'm gonna pass on those. We got this pair of vans right here. You can see the things coming off here. Um, what else? Just not really much going on today. There's a pair of Nikes right here that are just absolutely trashed. Not really seeing, seeing much. Oh, we got some Adidas. Basics cloud form form. Those are pretty good. 650. I'll grab those little classic high top Adidas suede leather. Got some vans. These are okay. Vans white slip ones. They're just really hard to clean. I might just grab them just to see if we could just soak them in some OxyClean and just see how clean we could get them. They're not bad. There's like some pink stains right there. Whatever. I'll grab those. I just picked up this other shirt. I didn't get a chance to film it on the rack, but it is a Torrid shirt, Torrid size one active. Uh, and it's got a little pink skull on there. I've found that in the past Torrid stuff uh, does well, especially if it has like skulls on it. I don't know what the correlation is to that, but, uh, and we're getting into Halloween soon. So this should sell really well. This is gonna be $4.75. I bet we could get like 25 bucks for it. Uh, plus shipping. Haley said she found a bunch of good stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, I got some good stuff. So I have like a, a Ooh, North, Face. North Face hoodie. Yeah, that'll be five seventy-five. It's a little worn, but yeah, that's great. Nice color too, like a lavender. I purple. also have a Torrid. 
Oh, look at you. Toward active hoodie. Toward active. That's awesome. It says a size two. I think it might be a size. Like, Toward, I 12. think it's like the largest. So like a one would be like extra large, two is two extra large. I think uh, something like that. Okay. Because yeah. I was like, this is pretty big. Yeah. This is probably the coolest thing. This is a made in USA, Ohio State sweatshirt. Oh, nice. It doesn't have the little string. And I've, I don't recognize the tag. It's on like a Santi sweats, but it mm. is made in USA. USA. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I just found um, some North Face women's pants, but they're the zip ones. Oh, zip ones. Yeah, those and are cool. And I think cool. these are coming back into style. Yeah, for sure. Those are four dollars and seventy-five cents. Probably an easy twenty, twenty-five bucks or so. Yeah. Maybe even more since they they got the big belt loops on the back too. Yeah. That's what I, I saw this and I was like, Ooh, North Face. Yeah, that's awesome. Haley just found these. Story Birch. Oh, looks. Oh, sorry. Let's add them to the pile. So we spent $59 and all that stuff. And if those Tory Burch shoes that Haley found are real, I feel like those would probably sell for about that much. They felt pretty legit. <laughs> yeah. So we finally made it back home. I had to stop off at the post office as well as the grocery store to grab a couple things for this week, including some buffalo chicken dip, which is by far the best thing they have at Publix supermarkets. We're going to get uh, back to work here at the warehouse. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we've got to get some of this stuff cleaned up. I mean, the warehouse is just looking, <laughs> it's looking a little cluttered. Uh, and, and it's uh, it's just the, the vibes, the vibes are off. So we got to fix the vibes. So it's looking pretty good. I think I just rearranged the mess a little bit, but I, we did get everything out of the way and got the floor swept off. So it's definitely a big improvement. I can now walk around freely without tripping on cords and, and all that stuff. If you guys have any ideas of how we can like better organize this space, definitely drop a comment and let us know. This is like our shipping station over here where we keep most of our shipping supplies and we print and ship items. This is our whatnot area with a little whatnot table. I want to either get this painted or get like uh, a glass top for it or something just to not have bare wood. So it'd be cool to have a glass top so we could like write on it like with uh, dry erase markers and stuff. Little notes for whatnot auctions. We've got our inventory area back there. That needs <laughs> that needs some help. We just need to redo all of our inventory because we have uh, this is just eBay stuff. But as you can see, our bins are just not in <laughs> the correct order at all. Uh, so we got to get all that fixed up and get. I'm sure there's like a bunch of spider webs and stuff down there. So I just got to get move all this out and just clean back there again. We've got the clothing rack for whatnot. We've got Moses cow rug. I was going to sell this, but Moses has claimed it. That's where he lays when he's out here now. Got our clothing photo, photo station. We've got our hard good photo station. We've got now uh, this was this table was supposed to be just for our embroidery machine. Uh, but as you can see, it's become kind of like a catch all, which is a common theme in my life. My my wife Haley will tell you that I love finding flat surfaces to put stuff on <laughs> like we have so many tables out here and there's not a single one that doesn't have something on it i had this huge table i made um with like two shelving racks and a big piece of plywood on top and i was like oh we can have this for all like we bring in inventory this is going to be the death pile area that we can use this table to get everything processed and we do not process anything here we just <laughs> put stuff here we clean it back there in the in the bathroom photograph it and all that stuff i can show you the new sink we got recently if you guys remember we had like a really nice um like mowing 
bathroom sink in here, but it was really shallow. I'll show it to you. I'll show you the old one first before I show you the new one. This was the old one. It's in great shape. We're gonna, I guess, put it on Facebook Marketplace or something, mowing, mowing faucet. But you can see it's super shallow. It's only, I don't know, maybe five or six inches deep. So it's not ideal to clean things in. So we got our man Dean and Dunn Handyman Services over here yesterday. And we swapped out this one for this new, cheaper, but more, utility utility sink haley's already started cleaning some shoes in here today i think but it's really nice uh it's pretty sturdy for like a plastic sink i think this was like 160 bucks or so at lowe's with the legs comes with the faucet and everything you even got a little spray a little handle comes out spray everything down so it is perfect for what we need i want to get some shelves built in here to hold extra uh like shipping supplies and stuff maybe a shelf back here to put our like cleaning products on that um, that we use for shoes and stuff because right now it's just in a big bucket right here So lots of room for improvement in here and really everywhere everywhere <laughs> could use a little bit of improvement I was gonna clean this stuff today uh, But honestly, I just got pretty tired and I thought that was good enough So I was looking at some of the YouTube comments from yesterday's video or the last video that we posted And it was the one where we did the pull packing and shipping and I gave you guys the financial breakdown On all of our sales to show you what we actually get to keep after fees shipping cost of goods and taxes and apparently that is not enough for some people this lady commented and said uh still showing expenses question mark exclamation point what about gas car phones internet electricity packaging storage labor so many expenses you were leaving out love your videos but please tell the whole story and i could probably talk about this for maybe an hour but for the sake of time uh, i'll just have a short little explanation here and this kim has a point there are other expenses that go into running a reselling business you need a computer and you need a way to take pictures and you have to drive to the post office and you have to have shipping supplies and all that stuff and and while i i guess i could probably prorate shipping supplies i'd say on average we probably use it probably costs us about 30 to 40 cents per item uh, in shipping supplies to send that stuff out. So I think in yesterday's video, we did like eight items total. So let's say it was like $3.50 or so in shipping supplies. That's definitely important to keep up with. That's a cost associated with the business. I just didn't think it was really appropriate to factor in when we were doing just a little financial breakdown in a YouTube video. With phones, internet, electricity, and, and storage, so I guess the warehouse space, all that I guess is technically like you can write those off on your taxes, like whatever percentage you use those items for, for your business, you can write off that cost of that bill. Uh, but again, that's not something we're going to get into on a YouTube video where we're just showing you eight things we sold on eBay. We don't prorate those expenses per item sold. And her last point was labor. And to be honest with you guys, I could talk about just this one for probably an hour. But again, for the sake of time, I'll try to be brief. This is a fair argument only because we have a paid helper. Kim, you've probably seen her in past videos. I'm not going to share publicly on YouTube what we pay Kim, uh, but it's more than most people that are making in a job that she's doing. She's very happy with the amount of money that she's making, and we're happy with the amount of money we're paying her to do the work she does. So that's really all that matters. But Kim actually hasn't been here when we got most of these items listed, pulled, packed, and shipped out. So none of her expenses tied to her employment with us uh, really factored into these items that sold. And sometimes if we make a video saying that we made, you know, say a thousand bucks in a weekend on eBay after fees, shipping, cost of goods, and taxes, we'll still get comments from people that say, oh, well, what about your time? How much time did you spend making that thousand dollars? And that is important to look at from time to time. Like you don't want to work 80 hours a week to make a hundred bucks. Like just go get a job at that point. But usually it's like three to eight hours of time between Haley and I uh, to make about a thousand bucks. So it's well worth it. Uh, but what bothers me about that is that people that have real jobs in the world, like, oh, I'm a, an insurance underwriter and I make $42,000 a year. Nobody ever asks you, what about your time? What about your gas and your wear and tear on your car? What about, what about the socks that you go through every day? What about your mortgage? What about the electricity and all that stuff, your phone bill? And all, nobody asks you that, ask you that when you have traditional employment. It's only when you're self-employed. And I think the whole idea behind this is that people are just looking for excuses as to why it won't work. Don't get me wrong, being self-employed can be very difficult, can be very scary. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could easily get into a bind. But it's just frustrating that people are so critical of self-employment. If people had a much more 
open mindset and were, got excited about, about when people started their own companies and their own businesses, I think it would change the world to some degree at least. So long story short, yes, there's a lot of expenses that come along with selling things on eBay, but it seems to be fairly common sense. You need boxes, you need tape, you need a computer, you need a way to take pictures, you need to print labels, you gotta pay shipping and all that stuff. And so when we do these financial breakdowns for you guys, yes, there's other things that go, that go into it, but for the sake of time, I just give you the big ones, fees, cost of goods, shipping, and taxes. There was another comment on yesterday's video, and of course I can't find it now, but uh, when we were at Dunkin' Donuts getting a coffee before we went to the Goodwill Bins, I jokingly asked Haley if this was a business expense, the coffee we were getting. She said no, and we laughed because we both know that it's not. But somebody commented on the video and said, hey, just to let you know, the IRS has recently had a new update, and now all meals are 100% tax deductible in your, in your business as long as you're working. And that's True, the IRS did have an update, but it still doesn't affect local meals. If you are staying home and you're just running errands, going to the bins, going to the post office, stuff like that, just grabbing lunch, that meal is not tax deductible at all if you are staying home. The only meals that are 100% tax deductible are meals you eat while traveling out of town for work. So we're going to New York in a week, I think, to speak at eBay Open. Right after that, we're going to Los Angeles to go to Vid Summit, a YouTube conference. And all the meals we have when we're out of town at those places are 100% tax deductible. But lunch on the way to the bins or coffee or whatever on the way to the bins is not a tax deductible expense. So I hope that clarifies things. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. Ask one and they will verify. I don't know a lot of things, but I know uh, I know this. This is definitely true. So I think that's going to do it for it today, folks. It's like 530. Who is that? There's somebody. There's somebody that just pulled in our driveway. And I don't know who that is. It's not an Amazon truck, but sometimes Amazon people use their own cars. And I have ordered a lot of stuff from Amazon recently. So I have a package. Oh, uh, that was fast. I just ordered it yesterday. If you want to back up to the shed right here, that's where it's going. That'd be great. I had to order salt or something for our water softener. That's in this, our water thing is in the shed. You know what else is in this shed? Wasps. Can you see them? I'm pretty sure the salt goes in here. I've never had a water softener before, but I'm pretty sure, I hope the salt goes in there. Let me know. It's heavy. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys know how to put salt in a water softener tank, let me know because I, I was probably just going to look up a YouTube video. I think when we closed on the house, the real estate agent gave me some pamphlet or something to talk about and I have no idea. <laughs> no idea what I did with that. So I need to, uh, need to figure that out. But I think that's going to do it for today's video, folks. It's like 545. I think I'm going to go ahead and clock out. We did the whatnot auction. We went to the grocery store, hit two thrift stores, went to the post office. We've done a lot today. And then I came home and cleaned all this stuff. So uh, I think, uh, I think today is a wrap. I will say that I had a couple people in yesterday's video make comments about how we should use pirate ship box in bag shipping, like putting a big box inside of a big poly bag and ship it for like nine bucks on pirate ship. And that is not the way pirate ship box and bag works. If you guys wanna watch a video I did explaining the pirate ship box and bag method 100% clearly and accurately, this video was literally watched by pirate ship CEO and he confirmed that it's 100% accurate. I will link it right here on the screen. Watch that video, it'll explain the pirate ship box and bag method perfectly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button for us. Hit the subscribe, man, I'm so close. Subscribe button. Love you so much. We will catch you guys on the next one. Oh.